Hey, what is up, mortal? Stan here. Before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time, so if you're interested, go to the description and check it out. Each item helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video gets 300 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 41.3% of you are subscribed to us, so please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the story. As he headed for work for the case that he was informed to, the night prior, the atmosphere was quite heavy, like it was spellbounded of something unspeakable. There was only notification of the case. He guessed that it must have been a recent occurrence, from the looks of some who seemed clueless as he was. Shoto seemed to be easy to read as Ingenium, his friend Tenya Ida, approached him. Amongst the faces in the room, his was the heaviest. Is the case something I should be wary of too? The official meeting hasn't started yet, so he knew that asking would still be deemed appropriate. But as his co-pro hero's word rolled off, it finally dawned upon him. He understood now why some had long faces. It happened again. Several heroes are being ambushed. Being labeled as fake. It wasn't known, but rather to him as well as the rest of the heroes in the room, who were composed of his former classmates in terms of numbers. It was something they encountered firsthand. Specifically, the vigilante they initially carried the beliefs was someone whom they had met when they were just younglings of the Hero Society. Interns and pro-heroes alike are being targeted, just like the first time they did it. UA High five years ago. The first time that Shoto had personally seen one of the victims by the infamous hero killer they called Stain, it was through one of his friends, Idia Tenya, to his brother had unfortunately encountered him and befell the misery of his grave injuries, which, naturally, his classmate never took well. He wasn't able to grasp things early on until the intervention erupts, to the place where the recent killings of the hero killer would be. It was the same place where his classmate would choose his internship. The last looks they shared upon the station was a veil of vengeance and hatred. Shoto realized it late, so he sprints towards the location where they could be, where he could find both of his avenging friend and the hero killer. As while he was at it, he informed the pro heroes and spotted the nearest one, Endeavor, followed by another swipe upon the gadget to dial a backup. He knew he'd arrive quicker. Locating through the deductions alone was hard. It took him several turns before there was a scream, but it wasn't of help. He was positive he figured out their location, finally. What laid before Shoto's eyes as he took the final turn was a seemingly conscious hero, and Ida, who's a little bloodied up on the floor, being stood up upon the hero killer, his katana upon his neck. Ida! When he cuts! Ida's face was both relief, panic, and worry as his eyes darted upon Shoto, but the hero killer remained in his position, with the threat hanging in the air. He paralyzes you upon cutting you! He was baffled, yet pondering on enemy quirk can be settled later. For now, his priority was getting stain off Ida, so Shoto charged ice towards him, which the hero killer dodged, effectively distancing himself from both of them. Shoto immediately rushed towards his aid in search of other injuries, aside from the visible gash, which his blood actively flows out of. You may have come to aid your friend. The hero killer started, his murderous glance of conviction staring right through Shoto. But he has to be offered for the Just Society. I'm afraid you don't get to decide who lives or not, hero killer. Then he turned his look towards Ida, in assurance that he came within sound reason. Pro heroes will be here in a while. Until then. He wasn't able to continue as Stain broke the ice that kept the distance, so he used fire to ward him off. Shoto knew of the quirk, so the least he could manage until help arrived was long-range defenses. To make sure neither he nor anyone would be cut or be injured in general. You know, young wannabe hero, you don't have to do this. Stain muses, knowing smirk off his face, for he knew people being trapped or cornered, no matter how heroic they may seem, would take the chance to run and save their own. After all, the current sets of heroes except All Might were nothing but idealistic fakes, and therefore they shall be weeded out. Shoto, for all the things that have been, wasn't, and would never be the type to leave anyone, for he knew better. Laughing in sarcasm, he spat back. But isn't that what heroes do best? He changes his stance into an offensive one, meddling even when not asked because helping and saving shall come first. To say that he was impressed was an understatement. From the perspective of the hero killer, could be their hope for this crumbling society. Might he be one of All Might's kind? But fret not, 
jumping upon conclusions wasn't listed on the hero killer's set of attitudes. So, only way for him to figure out is through a fight, which he not deny himself as he surges for an attack. Todoroki met the hero killer in the middle, using his fire to attempt to immobilize his opponent. However, he predicted. He lowered his stance for another shot at immobilizing the hero killer. It was a good thing Shoto's eyes caught it so fast, the second place coming from him, so he utilized his fire to repel himself away, back from where he stood moments ago. But before he tried to get up, his body failed to respond. He... he grazed me? Horror filled his system as his eyes darted upon the small cut in his arm. It was so small yet, he couldn't already move. Ida remained the same, and Shoto could only hope for his other backup to make it in time. A victorious smirk makes his way to the hero killer's fate as he steadies his stance. You know, I might spare you, but that one friend you're protecting, only his body would tell if he managed to last till he was brought to the hospital. However, before the hero killer could get close, an explosion hit him, which effectively pinned him down. Bakugo, get out of there before he cuts you! Another warning. The newly arrived youngling mumbled. He retreated before the hero killer could register what just happened. Fucking bastard! Try making your announcements a little early! There was irritation laced with Bakugo Kasuki's voice. His resounding grumpiness was absent as he slowly assessed the current situation. There are a lot of people getting in my way today. The hero killer just wanted fakes killed, and he hasn't had any time to meddle with these high school kids trying to prove themselves. You sure did have some wonderful peers with you, Ingenium. He surged once more, but towards the newly arrived kid this time. The sight of the blade coming for him, Bakugo immediately blew it off with an even stronger explosion than the one that he conjured when he arrived, effectively throwing off the hero killer and damaging his katana. I hope you somehow made any plans while you sit on your ass in there, bastard! He was pensive for a moment before he glanced back, a knowing stare. Ida, can you already move? And that was his only reply to not give too much to the opponent still trying to get up from the force of the explosion. Shoto then froze the spaces between the turbos on his leg, a hidden sign for him to use the last of his receiver bursts for the attempt of a decisive blow. There was a silent exchange of glances between the three. While they haven't cooperated as much during the training classes, it was enough to exchange the plans between them. What Shoto did was create another ice wall and trails towards the hero killer. Upon contact, Stain immediately went onto the aggressive and tore it into pieces, and paved his way through the obstructed view from both sides. Kasuki's indirect explosion emitted smoke, effectively hiding their tracks from the hero killer. The plan was a success from the looks of it. Ida's reciprocal burst and Kasuki's explosion that simultaneously hit the hero killer. And as the smoke cleared, they ran towards the hero killer, removing his blades out, following the freezing of his whole body with ice. None of it lasts long as Stain gains his consciousness. However, thoroughly beaten up to even fight back, yet he called for Ingenium, earning himself a fighting stance from both Kasuki and Shoto. Yet dismissed as he let out a chuckle of amusement. Forget about yourself for a second and just try saving others. Don't wield your power for your own sake, because getting trapped by your own hate and acting out of a pure interest makes you from the furthest thing from a hero. Remember that next time you ever let your emotions overtake you. It was his own admiration of the potential laid upon the three students. He may not be as close to the ideal hero. Maybe this time he can let it slide and give them time for growth. Save the killing for the next time they didn't change and grow from the ideal heroes he expected them to be. And it was Ida, their ever so noble class representative, whose head has been cleared out of his hatred looming over him. It was out of the sole respect of the conviction, and how he also, despite the strangeness of it, deemed the advice morally right. Then he looked over Shoto who busied himself with attending the injured pro hero native. A hero like All Might. Not so bad for the new generation. For what felt like hours, the pro hero backups arrived along with Gran Turino, who scrutinizingly looked at him for signs of injuries for the recklessness he has done tonight. I told you to keep yourself there! But Shoto just sighed, for they both knew nothing could make him stop anyways. But some of the pro heroes attended to Ida's injuries. Most of them were shocked to see the hero killer tied and completely sitting upon the pavement. Given Shoto's current conversation and Ida being attended to, Koski was left to deal with the inquiries of the adults and police. No one was ever aware of Flying Nobu until Shoto was grabbed by it, despite its bloodied body. Stain, on the other hand, saw this, and looked the blood that dropped on one of the pro hero's cheeks. It all happened too fast because the next thing which unfolded was a stab Nomu while the hero killer held Shoto's collar. Shoto! Endeavor, who was trailing after the Nomu, who arrived at the scene. Obviously, panic and worry coursed through him at the sight of his son held by the hero killer, as he remained standing still. He recovered fast from the initial shock as he readied his stance, 
then activated his quirk. Surely the murderous stare of the hero killer wasn't missed as the hero named Endeavor rolled off the tongue with the utmost hatred. Endeavor, you fake. Come and try getting me. There was only silence upon his provocation. No one moved when Stain stood. There was bloodlust, hatred, and the promise of misery from his looks alone. The conviction of holding towards his principles. The vice grip he had on it. Upon the death of heroes whom he deemed fakes reached everyone. You fakes. Come and try getting me, you fakes. He was both murderous and delirious at this point. None of you fakes are worth killing me. Except the true hero, All Might. But then he lost consciousness while standing. Yet no one would forget how the hero killer was the only one who stood amongst his opponents with such bravery, even when the heroes faltered. Soon a video of his belief spread upon the world wide web like a wildfire. Heroes should not seek compensation. The title shall only be granted to those who had epitomized self sacrifice. Shuttle repeated upon his mind after the incident, where the video was released to the public. He can't fathom as a child as to how deep the beliefs were and how it has awoken the doubts of society upon heroes. Present time. But even as an adult, pro hero Shoto could not completely dismiss the belief. An act of justice that neglected the principles of not on maleficence. The birth of moral debate. He thought as he reminisced about the personal encounter they had with a hero killer, now can help appease the villains behind who willingly committed themselves into the acts of carrying his principles. The battle of which is morally right has taken lives, and it will take more. He simply commented, and no replay was made. They just waited for the meeting to finally start and the room slowly filled with the members of the Hero Association. Thank you for watching at the end of the video. If there are a few more things I'd like to say before the video ends. On behalf of We Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer for this video, as well as the editor for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up one of the heads of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it for today's video. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out, mortals, and have an amazing day!